Good morning again, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Expressive Photography. One of the most common questions I get is, is there a secret to finding your creativity? And in this video, I am certainly going to try and answer that. It could be a little bit more obvious than you think. For example, mine is curry flavoured potato chips and Red Bull. Let's go off into the forest and see what we can find. So I've come up to this little waterfall I know and um, I haven't been here for a couple of years actually. During lockdown I think was the last time I was here because it's really close to the house. Surrounded by these mossy trees, mossy boulders and hopefully you can hear the audio over the sound of the falls there. So I have, because I haven't been here for perhaps two or three years you forget what places are like and I kind of knew in my head that there was a little, a little waterfall in here. Now it's a funny kind of day, it's kind of cloudy and then bright. Um, so the light in here is changing hugely and very, very quickly. Uh, when I came around the corner, the first thing that I really saw was the tree, this uh, little uh, dead branch there, kind of lying down in front of the waterfall. And also some nice light in the water uh, with some boulders and some quite nice colorful rocks under there. So what I tend to do in scenes like this is I shoot the obvious, I shoot the thing that caught my attention the first, the waterfall and the tree. And as I spend more time here, perhaps other arrangements will present themselves, other things will catch my attention. The, the more I slow down, the more I just explore with an open mind. But when we look at the scene that I've just uh, shot there, Obviously this Velvia simulation makes the water really blue and the, the green uh, really pop. But there's great luminosity in that and because the GFX 100S is um, recording all the pixels, I've got all sorts of different composition options apart from the 4x5 that I've, I've shot in camera. Same with the film simulation, I can change that later on in raw processing. I'm using again my Case Revolution circular polarizer in here. There's quite a lot of glare bouncing around off the water in particular and I'm using the polarizer to just cut through some of that, uh, that kind of offensiveness. But what we're going to do this morning is spend a bit of time in this really like a little secret glade. It's, uh, yeah, there's a Gaelic word for it, Scythian, which is uh, fairies or uh, pixies or elves um, and it very much feels like that, like a, the, the Scythian river. So just before we start looking at a few of the images, um, I would like to thank everyone who's purchased a copy of my book, Out of Darkness. Uh, the feedback has been incredible. And honestly, there are times when I didn't really know if it was worth the effort to produce it and the expense and the stress. Uh, but when people start writing and seeing how much it's meant to them and that people have been crying while reading the book and things like that, it's incredibly powerful to hear that. Um, and I know that it was a worthwhile process. Uh, there are copies still available. There are three editions, the standard edition, which is just the book, the deluxe edition, which comes in a beautiful red uh, and silk lined slip case uh, with a choice of one of three prints. And then, of course, the super deluxe uh, collector's edition, which comes in a bespoke uh, presentation box and comes with a whole bunch of goodies. Uh, so if you would like a copy of Out of Darkness, then please click on the link in the description. So this is the first scene and really this is the original composition that I took in camera, the 4x5 vertical. And 
I know there there are flaws. It's the the branch itself is somewhat imperfect. There's some white patches on it, or some patches where the bark has disappeared. Uh, there's these kind of straggly uh, things coming down, and you know the, some people would say that there's there are distractions here. Um, however. Um, this was the first thing that caught my eye as I walked around the corner and saw the scene. And uh, like I say in the video, pointing your camera at the obvious is a perfectly okay thing to do. And the attributes of the luminosity and the contrast and the flow and the atmosphere and the graphical nature of it still means that I think it's a worthwhile scene to have pointed the camera at and I enjoyed it, and that is the key. I enjoyed pointing my camera at this. I enjoyed seeing the images appear on the back of the screen. And honestly, in comparison to sitting at my desk working, enjoying this was much, much greater pleasure for me. Now, anyone who's spent any time uh, photographing in rivers uh, can't help but notice what's happening at their feet. Um, there were some very beautiful rocks here. There's, I think it's granite. There's some granite boulders in this river. And the way the light was just shining through um, through the trees and down into all off this, all this mossy uh, forest there shining down onto the surface and creating these wonderful reflections and abstractions and I do love uh, the kind of fractal nature of the way light interacts with surfaces. We have a strong uh, circular boulder here with some quite nice light on it and some quite nice striations and then some more shadowy areas uh, that kind of frame it. Um, I'm always going to point my cameras at things like this and I truly believe that the the secret of creativity and the secret of um, enjoying your time in the landscape is to immerse yourself and to photograph things that interest you. And if the light shining off the water interests you more than the waterfall or the mossy boulders or anything else that's going on, then that is what you point your camera at. It's nice and simple. Now this was the area that I hadn't been to before. I, I made my way down uh, this canyon and th this is where I started up, was round the corner from here at the top of the frame. Uh, the waterfall was round to the left at the top of there. And when I made my way down here, uh, I spent a bit of time up at this little cascade and I wasn't very happy with the photographs. I, I think I was probably trying to force it um, and that is another critical point. As soon as you are trying to force your creativity, trying to force um, the photographic process, the creative process, the engagement process, then you are pretty much scuppered. And just because I've been doing this for over 20 years, sometimes it just doesn't work that well. Um, you know, there's this expectation that we should be able to go out and make photographs at any time. Um, however, when I got down to the bottom here and saw this scene, I re-engaged because it was asking me to photograph it. I wasn't looking for something to photograph that was presenting itself to me. And I think it was worth spending a little bit of time with this composition because it's, to me, it's quite an interesting one. We have a connection of luminosity between the top of the frame and the bottom of the frame. I do like the way the water flows over this cascade and creates these little fingers of uh, contrasty light. The little bit of a warm boulder uh, down in the bottom of the frame, I think, 
adds uh, some warmer tones to the greener tones. So I generally feel that this is a scene that feels quite harmonious in terms of its colour. The obvious uh, feature here is the fallen log across the middle of the scene there and these sort of somewhat complementary angled rocks. So geometry is a massive trigger for me here. We have a big triangular block uh, making up most of the right hand side. We have a diagonal uh, angular block there, a uh, tree, the angles of the rocks, more rocks, another angle, more angles. This is a very angular scene. And you can notice that the horizontal and the vertical tree at the top of the frame actually have quite a calming influence. If they were somehow removed or reduced or made um, more atmospheric, and let's just quickly see if I can, uh, yeah, I mean, I've already taken the dehaze right down. I'll take the clarity right down. I'll just do everything I possibly can to reduce contrast in that area. I'll open up the blacks, um, make it warmer, as you can see, I've already made quite a few significant adjustments um, to try and make that less uh, less obviously contrasty, um, but it's still quite a powerful thing. So um, the the angles of the main part of the composition, I think, are the heart of it. And with this, it might be worth going in and just like blurring it or something in Photoshop just to diminish it further. Now, this final scene was the one that really excited me the most. Um, and as you can see, I had to put the camera on the, the ground. Uh, it wasn't possible for me to get a tripod into this little corner. It was just way too confined. I do have quite a large tripod and the legs are long. So, you know, you can't always get them where you want them. However, um, I just felt that there was an intimacy to this scene um, using the 35 mil, the 20, the 20 to 35 f4 lens, um, and this is at f22 at 23.4 mil, so it's slightly zoomed in off its minimum. Two seconds at f22 ISO 50, and the two seconds is really just to try and create the the right shutter speed that I was looking for to get the flow. Um, I any shorter than that and I think I was going to get too much detail uh, in the water here and I really felt that the rocks themselves, uh, this slope here and this slope here and the more shadowy rocks at the top there, I felt they were providing enough structure on their own without actually having to add any more structure for the water. But I really like this. It's a scene that uh, when I noticed it, it just felt like it was a photograph waiting to happen. Uh, very little processing done to this one at all, really. Uh, just that lovely little orange rock just sticking out in the middle of the frame there. But the product of this expedition that I went down the river here was uh, inquisitiveness. It was just, I wonder what's down there. I wonder what's down there. I wonder what's around that corner. And that kind of approach even if you go around the corner and there's nothing that catches your eye, there might be. It's almost like buying lottery tickets. If you're not in it, you're not going to win it. <laughs> That's their advertising slogan. And it's the same with landscape photography. If you're not into the process of exploration or inquisitiveness, then you're unlikely to discover anything new. So I think the secret of my creativity, albeit uh, secret uh, sauce creativity, is inquisitiveness and that ability to go into a landscape and have fun regardless of the outcome. Whew, what a session that was. Um, it wasn't easy to talk down by the river just because of the sound of the waterfall and the stream. It's just a mess really. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that whole session really. And uh, I could sit here all day, but I suppose I'd better get back to the office and continue with work. Um, but uh, 
I hope you've enjoyed my exploration through this beautiful little Scythian, this fairy wood. Um, in the summer, it's absolutely alive with midges in here, so March is a pretty good time to be here. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please hit the subscribe button. Dive into our learning material, of course, the, the trilogy of ebooks that I've written about engaging with the landscape and trying to uh, find a better relationship than just um, pointing your camera at predictable things, but trying to understand the way you see the landscape and the, the preferences that you're going to have as an individual photographer rather than just following the herd. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm Alistair Ben, Expressive Photography, and um, yeah, I don't want to leave. <laughs> Bye for now. Oh yeah, that's the creativity sauce right there.